That was absolutely. Good. All right, guys, we're back with the sound advice. I am Toyd's DIY Audio here with Justin, the DIY Audio Guy. And today we're going to be talking about our best, the best that we've used for well, audio products. Oh, we have all kinds of best things. We have like sound deadener. We have a uh, specific uh, drivers that we've used. We even have our favorite 3D printer on the mark here. So we got a <laughs> lot that we're going to be talking about today. So, um, Justin, I'm going to let you start, man, because you, you won't, you want you. me to start. Uh, well, first yeah. of all, it's, it's, uh, hello everybody down in the chat. I see some familiar names. We got El Fuego. We have someone all the way from England joining us. Um, uh, that's oh. awesome. It's, it's kind of cool. You don't realize when you start posting videos to YouTube, how much of a reach you're going to have. Oh, wait, uh, no, people. he just responded. He said it's New England. Oh, oh, how did I miss that? <laughs> no, I'm joking. He didn't. Man. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm over here trying to be serious and you're in a joking mood. That's fine, I, though. I'm sorry. But uh, it's been a while since we've <laughs> since we've streamed and it's mostly all my fault because I was out of town for uh, work last week and wasn't able to stream. And then Nick, what, what was that happened the week before that? I forget, but we weren't, we just couldn't make it. We weren't stopping the stream by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it's good to be back and it's good to see everybody off in the chat. Um, and Nick, it's good to chat with you again about all the cool stuff that we've done. And the idea behind this, behind this show is to talk about the things we've used, things we've actually had our hands on and used that we think are the some of the best things that we've used. Yeah, and um, it's important to to dictate that because we we get approached by people that want us to be our affiliates all the time. And we talk about this behind the scenes, but they don't want to send us any products or anything. And they just want us to just promote them and say, hey, how awesome they are. We're not going to do that because that's ridiculous. We don't know how good they are. And we've talked about that behind the scenes. We just think that that's crazy. When someone reaches out to me with the, hey, sign up for my affiliate program, I always respond with a, this type of thing is a show and tell thing, right? I, I have to physically have either, either something that I just want to show y'all or something that I want for myself um, because I like doing this stuff. That's why I do it, right? Uh, if sometimes they won't. They're like, oh, just you know, put the links in the description. It's like, yeah, but if I don't actually have the thing to show people and um one thing that I've noticed, and I'm going to go on a, on a tangent, Nick, if that's okay, before we start talking about gear, no, there I are like a lot tangents. of websites out there that are just amalgamations where they grab the specs for things and, and list the specs for things. I'll give you an example. I was looking at digital signal processors and I was playing up in my DSP game and I bought, I've got it right here, a, a mini DSP. Ooh. This is the CDSP 8x12. It is their biggest car digital signal processor. Uh, I bought that from Parts Express, and we got a link to all this stuff down in the description. And I'm cheating a little bit because I haven't actually used it other than getting it out of the box and going, ooh, ah, right? Uh, but it is, um, it's an 8N12 out uh, signal processor. And this one right here, you can buy a software upgrade and 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 use Direct Live on it, which yeah, will auto-tune. Um, yeah, that's amazing. And that's that's kind of cool, but I went with it because it is the the least expensive. Um, <laughs> the true voice of reason wants a low that's budget soundbar review. Did one uh, of those? It was not on this list. <laughs> I know he knows that too. He's laughing at that. That was a, that was like everyone knows how much you love that one. <laughs> yeah, um, that was a fantastic. I mean, they just lied in the description. It was terrible. Watch the video if you haven't seen it. But so, this was the least expensive, like multi-channel DSP and I've got a DSP 408 and it's my best budget DSP. I do like it, but I'm ready to upgrade my DSP game and get this thing going. So, uh, so let's, gonna... let... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Going. That's my first, that's my first best of tonight is the I was going to say, let's, let's stay there. Cause we have a bunch of DSP boards that we love. In fact, we both have, I think, do we, do you have this one on there yet? Do you have this one on there? Um, I, you know what? I've got that sitting in a box. I haven't unbox Wait a second. Do I have it back here? Oh yeah, he has I've got it. all these boxes this, back here, and this it's like oh yeah, I have it. This I have linked, guys. This is one you'll want to check out. This is the Dayton Audio Four by One Hundred, and they have a bunch of different ones. They have two by four by, but the thing that's really cool about this, and you can't see it up close, but you can see right here, there's four spots on it. This actually has a spot for four different potentiometers where you can program and individually tell what those potentiometers do like they can do crossover frequency uh they can do volume of the tweeter volume of the woofer volume of the subwoofer if you want to make it like a 2.1 board and the thing that has always stopped people from using this board is how confusing 
the softwares because this uses Sigma Studios, which is probably the most powerful DIY DSP that you can ASMR use. There. It's amazing. Yeah, you do. Um, but what Parts Express has done, it's pretty cool. If you follow the link in the description and you click on that and go to the downloads and manual section, they have a zip file that has basically presets uh, that will show you exactly that'll open up and it'll have it pretty much set up. Like if you wanted to use this for a uh, stereo two way crossover, it'll already be set up and it'll tell you which one to hook up where and everything. And you can just change the settings, like change the crossover frequency, change the attenuation. So they try to make it much easier. It's kind of cool. And I, I am going to tell you what this one, I'm going to do a video on this week. So if you want to know more about it, check that out. But I, this has the potential to be really amazing. I haven't had a chance to get mine uh, unboxed it right here. Uh, and so Parts Express uh, sent both these out to us. And they, I don't think they know that we talk to each other. Um, <laughs> uh, but we'll probably at some point do some kind of collaboration where we're going to build projects and show them off on, on the live stream at some point. So, Yeah. Uh, AJC says, you can assign them in Sigma Studio. I set it up to gain control per speaker. And you're right. And Parts Express has them set up for different things, like a 2.1, where you can turn up the main volume, the volume of the fronts and the volume of the sub and things of that nature. That's completely up to you. I want to apologize to Jim D. I told him I'd never use a DSPLF in a vehicle, but it should work because it's 5 volt. He said the noise in the USB power supply was very annoying. To stop the noise, I had to use a second battery to power it. That's not good. So... I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, DSP LF might be out for some people if they want to use it for their car. I always used it in my home, so I don't know. Oh, and these are the, the pots. Some people made fun of me for saying pots. I said pots with an S. Yeah, the, the technical term, if you were to like take a, a broadcasting class, they would say that dial that controls the volume is the pot. Uh, which is short for potentiometer or something like that. Yeah, but no one wants to say potentiometer. All right, but do you have another DSP on there, don't you? Uh, yeah, the, I had two, uh, the best budget DSP and the best DSP, and the budget one was the DSP 408 from, from Parts Express. Uh, so that's I, that's. How that. do you like that? You know, it's funny because I know that some people had some problems with it, uh, some noise issues, and I've heard a few of my viewers comment that theirs made some noise, but mine's worked flawlessly. Uh, the only thing I have against it is it doesn't have more channels, which is why I'm upgrading. But, I mean, this thing was 150 bucks when it came out. You can go to my blog and grab a coupon and get, get $15 off. You know, you can add a Bluetooth module for programming. You can add a remote control that's a, a volume control only. Um it has presets. I mean, for 150 bucks, you're not going to find another DSP that will touch it. Um, now, PRV has one that's that's cheaper. Uh, Parts Express sells that one too, but it doesn't have like the remote features or, or it's not programmable. There's controls actually physically on the device. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a, it, it works great. And if you're expecting a digital signal processor that will do things that this mini DSP will do, well, you got to spend 600 bucks on a mini DSP. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's always kind of the thing that you have to worry about is, you know, like you said, you're going to have to spend money if you want to do that. So I'm going to show this. This is the D the APA 1200 DSP. I have one of these. This is going to be on the channel soon. This is a really interesting and unique um, amplifier. Now, this is made for home theater subwoofers. The reason why it's interesting and unique, and we're going to test this on the channel. We're going to test how well this actually works. But it has a microphone that you plug up to it, you put it in your main seating area, and it will auto-tune or auto-DSP your subwoofer for that room. And that's pretty amazing. There are a few things I don't like about it. I'm going to mention that right now. I'll save some for the video. Oops. But the main thing is um, it can be bridged to get you 11. First of all, it's 1150 watts. So I'm not sure why they say 1200 watts because in the... In the software, it says 1150, 1160. I'm sorry, 1160. So I, I don't, I don't know. 1160 doesn't sound as good as 1200, I guess. But um, here's, here's, you can see this. Uh, the output at two ohm is 410 watts by two, four ohms 240 by two, and bridge four ohm is 1160. The only thing I don't like about this is it seems like it's really only going to be designed for either two small subs or one big sub. You, you're probably not going to be able to use this for multiple subwoofers because of that power limitations 
Awesome. So, hey, uh, there was a comment. It's up a little bit uh, from Hans Hans Schmidt. Um, I feel one. like I'm pronouncing that wrong. Right. Um, I actually think I'm going to have an answer for that. It might be what you're looking for. Um, a 2.1 system. So this is a, a little compact amplifier. Again, all this. <laughs> why do we show stuff from Parts Express? Because they're like the, one of the few places that sells this kind of home audio stuff, right? I mean, they, them and is it Medea Sound? About the only places I know of where you can get a lot of these kind of well, cool they, things. They don't really. They usually just sell mainly you know, speakers. Drivers, right. No. Right. I mean, if you want a little amp like this, you can go to Amazon there, you know, Chinesium. And of course, um, this is uh, I forget the model number. This is the, um, uh, it's not on here, but they sell these little 2.1 amps. There's a link down in the description. This is the old version. The new version has a variable crossover frequency. So you can actually change the crossover frequency on the subwoofer. And I've been using these for 2.1 systems in my kids' rooms and stuff like that for a couple of years now. And I like them a whole lot. So that's what I would recommend if you're looking for a 2.1 amplifier. It is Bluetooth. It has uh, two auxiliary inputs. One thing I don't like about it is it's because it's so small, the wire terminals are close together. And so you can't get like a dual banana plug in there. And because the terminals are so close together, you really should be using banana plugs um, because you're gonna, you're just not going to get wire <laughs> into all six of those. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to share one too, because I, I agree with that Dayton Audio. Um, I used to have one. Uh, I think it was the one before that where, it was before they went to the point one, but I mm -hmm. liked it as well. And this is another one that I know we both have had. Well, I think you've used as well, but this one's by a relic. It's a DIY board. If you want, I think they actually have this also in non DIY, like already packaged. Right. But this one is really cool too, because this one you can hook up to ACP workbench. You can buy, uh, I have a link to a relic in the description, by the way, guys, if you want to check them out. But you can use your micro USB, plug it into your computer, and you can DSP everything. You can change the crossover of the subwoofer. You can change the speaker's complete response to it. It's a very powerful little board. It does use a Phoenix connection versus your normal, you know, like binding posts. I guess I kind of like that Phoenix connection. Um, my only advice if you buy that would be to get the um, um, the go ahead and buy the little kit for the case. It's just a couple of pieces of acrylic. <laughs> that you can screw together. In fact, there they reached is. out to me a while ago and wanted to send me some more stuff. And I said, hey, I need only these kits. They said they would do it and I haven't heard anything back from them for a while. I should probably dig through the emails and find them. But I actually had them on my list as well as the best DIY amp board. Um, I putting them down as the best for mm -hmm. one reason and one reason only. And that's because if you buy a bunch of them, you can do home ho whole home audio. If you're not going to do home a whole home audio, get the boards from, from Parts Express. Uh, but if you want to have whole house audio, that is the best way to do it. Dude, it's it's amazing. I completely agree with you. They actually recently came out with in-ceiling speakers, which I got some. I'm going to test them out. I don't know how well they're going to be. But you can actually pair them. Like one comes with a slave and one comes with a regular. And you yeah. pair them as like left and right speakers. And they do the whole house audio. And you can plug your TV up to it. It's pretty cool. I, now that's I'm cool. At, yeah. So I like I'm actually, that. I, you know how easy it'd be to hook up whole house audio if you just kept plugging those up in your... Like that's crazy because all you need is a is a wall outlet somewhere to plug them into. Yeah, and that is the one downside. But if it's up in your attic, which most people are going to be, there should be outlets up there. There, there should, should be, be wire, <laughs> right? There There's wire up there. Should definitely be wire. If there's no wire in your attic, you should be concerned. <laughs> and if it's if you've got like um, if you have an attic that you can easily get into, yeah. that's perfect. Uh, like on the second floor of my house, um, I can reach the the ceiling of the second floor from my side attic. This door over here goes into the side attic. And so I can go in there and I can and I could, you know, poke holes down into the bedrooms and put wires for speakers. So or yeah, the living I, room. So I was pretty excited. Now, some people might say they're kind of expensive. I, I don't know. Like, a, you know, this is kind of a tangent because this is not on my list. They're like five hundred and fifty dollars for a pair. Um which is not cheap, but in the same instance, when you think about it, it comes with the amplifier, it comes with the whole house streaming. When you think about it and you put it all together, like, do you know how much it would, how of a pain, much of a pain it is to run like one selector source somewhere in your house and then mm -hmm. run it all throughout the act? The convenience is kind of where you're saving the money. Well, so, and the, the title of the show is the best, not the cheapest. Um. <laughs> well, that's true. But I don't know, if, by the way. I have not tested those speakers, so I don't want to say that they're the best, but a Relic in general, I've always been very happy with their, and that's the thing. A Relic doesn't use cheap parts. They use Infineon chips. Uh, they use some of the better DSP chips. I mean, all their stuff is, is top. And their DSP program, we had mentioned like uh, that 
The Dayton is a little bit harder, but they have presets. It's simple. I, I think the Aurelic program is simple. If you're used to any type of parametric EQ, it's pretty easy. Have you used ACP Workbench, Justin? I have not yet. Uh, I need to. I need to. I need to drop the ten dollars to order it and get it and get it sometime. You know what? Just just talk to them. They'll they'll send it to you because it's it's huge. Like you need to be able. I well, think the ACP Workbench is what is starting to really separate a, a relic from a lot of other companies. Yeah, the ability to DSP something is. I mean, even if all you do is EQ it a little bit, that's just nice to have. I agree. I mean, that's a, you know, if you look at those nice speakers that Apple makes and stuff that sound so good, they sound good because not because they're using fantastic speakers or sound good because they've been um, heavily EQ'd with a DSP. Yeah, it makes all the difference in the world, especially for those cheaper, less expensive speakers. All right, man, I, I, I have been talking too much. I want to hear from you, whatever you want to talk about. I feel like I've been doing nothing but talking. Um, so here's one for you. In fact, I'm going to cut down to uh, closer to the end of my list. And, um, and I want to show off what I think is, if you want to see here, whoops, wrong window. All these windows, they're going everywhere. Let me see if I can do this way. Okay, there we go. That's better. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay. I'm having technical difficulties over here. You're the first person to ever have that on this show. Yeah, that's I, that's right. I, I actually had, uh, I was working with a patron the other day. We we're doing some one-on-one -on -one, um, streaming like this. And I was trying to add, and I was having so much trouble adding it. It's, it's a, I'm like, geez. All right. This is this is the best big three kit out there. It is our our good friend, Mr. Robert Hi-Fi Vega. I don't know if, I'm assuming he's still selling them because his website is up. And he sent me one of these to review, and I thought it was fantastic. The thing I like the most about it is that it, it he kind of sent me everything you need. And it's it's a good big three kit because it uses really good parts. It's not just good wire. It's install bay wires, what mine was. It's, but it's good wire. But he also will sell you these really nice ring terminals. And, of course, um, if you look right here uh, on this one right here, you can see the military style um Oh, I like that a terminal for your battery. And I love those military style terminals. I, I will never go back to, you know, it, it, unless I'm hooking up like, you know, rows and rows of amplifiers in a car, that's what I'm going to use because you can just keep screwing things onto it and they're heavy duty. And I, I love them. They're great. So that's my, if you need big three kit, I strongly recommend that you go with, with high five Vega. That is nice. I like that a lot. I'm going to keep it. But he's worth every dime. Yeah, no, and you know what? It's good to support people like High Five Vega. We all lo love High Five Vega, even if he doesn't love us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So here's the deal: uh, AJC is talking a lot about the DSP, and he knows a ton about DSP. In fact, he's basically in charge. Well, he is in charge. I can't say basically. He is in charge. He's in charge of the DSP section on the website for the forum. So if you have DSP questions, you want to share your favorite DSP, whatever. I linked it in the description to go to toidsdiy.com slash forums. There's one specifically on DSP. Go there, talk to him, talk to us, throw some things out there. I'm going to be, you know, throwing the Dayton DSP board and also the Dayton APA 1200 when I test it out to, to kind of let you know. I See, I think the APA 1200 interests me because there's so many people that want to DSP their subwoofer that don't really know how. So I like the fact that it's really easy just plug and play microphone. I wish they would have made it a two ohm when it was bridged, though. That mm -hmm. to me makes more sense. All right. Um, best what, subwoofer. You have a best subwoofer. What's your favorite subwoofer? So my my top pick for a subwoofer is gonna be the Dayton Audio Ultimax. Uh, I okay. have been, uh, and ha I've been out of the vehicle for a while, but I had a, uh, a 10 inch Ultimax with a passive radiator and I ran that most of last summer and just the amount of air that little 10 inch beast can move. And, the, and it sounded great and it got low and, and I, I'm, I was very, very impressed with the Ultimax and I'm, I need to just put it back in the truck just because I enjoyed it so much. Uh, there are a ton of great subwoofers out there, but my first pick is going to be the Dayton Audio Ultimax. I've not tried the bigger ones, but that little 10 inch is just, just amazing. It handles 500 watts. I think it's a dual 2 ohm, so you can wire it down to 1 ohm, which is great for, um, you know, there are some amplifiers that will do around 500 watts into a 1 ohm load. 
and, and so I mean that's a relatively inexpensive amp as well. So that's that's a that's a winner for me. I like that. I like that driver. It's beefy. It's and it heavy. looks beautiful too. It's really pretty. Oh yeah. High roll surround. The basket's one of those cool looking baskets. And you know, the cool looking baskets there because people like us see the baskets and we want the basket to look cool. You know? Well, it's a and it's a cast basket versus like mm -hmm. so my budget one is the um is the MX series, the MX 15 series, because it's about $50 cheaper than the Ultimax. And output wise, very similar, very similar output wise, but it has a stamped steel frame compared to a cast basket. Very strong, still very good. I love it. I, I was listening to it just a few minutes before we get started in my theater room. And that's what I use my theater room. I love it. I mean, it, it will shake my entire theater room, just one of them. Uh, on 800 watts with my Chronix Ti. So I, I am telling you right now, if you want a budget one, also, I think it looks good, the MX series. If you want, you know, like the best, best one, then you go with the Ultimax. I completely I've got one that. of the 10-inch MXs, and I don't know what's going on with it, but it, it's making a weird sound. Um, mm -hmm. And it pretty much always has. Um, and I have a, I have a theory. Uh, when those MXs first shipped, the factory put the the speaker terminals on incorrectly and oh. and basically the um the tensile leads came out they weren't well they were not woven into the spider so the tensile leads come out and they went into the um you know those little terminals that are on the on, on the on the connectors and they're push style connectors right i like those and they and they jutted out away from the drivers so every time i pulled it in out of an enclosure they would snag and I think that I'm hearing the tensile lead snagging uh, or smacking against the uh, backside of the cone. And I actually, uh, the engineer, I forget his name. We had him on the show for, a, for an episode. Um, I'd messaged him about those, those tabs. And he said, yeah, they, they did oh, them wrong. Chris, maybe. Yeah. Chris. And he said, yeah, they did them wrong. And when we got a bunch in and saw that, and some of us broke some of them off, he said, and, uh, <laughs> uh. um, well, you should get them to send you a new one. I, you know what? I, you know, I, maybe I will, maybe I'll ask them to send another one to see if it works better. But I think that, but I, I had to, you know, I had to, I had to bend them to get them to go back so I could get the thing in out of a box. Cause when you're, you know, most people are going to put them in a box and leave them in a box. They'll stay in the enclosure forever, but I take it out of the enclosure, put it in a different enclosure and, you know, they take it out just to film it and put it back in. Um, and, uh, and that's that's always interesting. Uh, I, so I think that's what I'm hearing. I think the tinsel leads are actually slapping against the inside of the cone. I'm going to say that must be what you're using because I've used that subwoofer. We had a subwoofer shootout and that beat the CSS 12, which that CSS 12 is one of the, one of the better sounding, maybe the best sounding 12, actually probably the best sounding 12 inch subwoofer I've heard for sure. Um, and that's just a great subwoofer. It's very expensive, but it's, it's worth every penny if you're going for great sound. Now, how about this? I'm going to, I'm going to share the best overall budget subwoofer. In my honest opinion, right. although I think I know what you're going to say. I haven't seen your list. Right. I what think I know say? what you're going to say. I'm going to actually, I think I know exactly what you're going to say. I think I've got one right here Let's and see. I'm going to hold it up and I want to see if it is right. what. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me change how I want to share this. Cause we'll, we'll do it on the count of three. Cause I honestly don't know what you're going to show up. I think and I now, know what you're going to pick. So we'll do it like a three, two, one go and you do the count and we'll show it right. at the same on the, time. On the count of three. I, I'm going to laugh so hard if it's different. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right, I can't even see. Hold on, where's the thing at? <laughs> That's your no, point, it's dude. not. Oh, you got the tank van W5, don't you? Yeah, it's a W5. That's, That's my a... favorite small sub, though. Okay, you've got the GRS. So, well, here's the deal the GRS in of itself is not, it's a good budget sub, it's fine, it goes down low. It's 30 bucks, it used to be. It used to be 25. It went up to 30. That's, I know, it, which is fine. However, if you take four of these and you build this ISO 100, this thing will shake your house. I mean, it's crazy. And it only needs 250 watt plate amplifier. So you can use a cheaper plate amplifier. You can use, and I think when ISD says it'll be like 109 decibels anechoically in room, it's, it's significantly more than that. Mm -hmm. um, the Ultimax is like, 115 ish so somewhere in that range 150 it might be 118 actually but cool. 115 to 118 so you're not losing much at all by building something like this and the subwoofers cost you 120 bucks the amplifier 
I don't know. I don't know how much the amplifier, it, but it's under $300 to build the entire subwoofer with enclosure. And to me, it's pretty funny. There's somewhere on this form. I can't remember where, but someone has actually played a video of his wife uh, <laughs> listening to, and he, he plays it. He plays it in his, um, it, it's so funny. You have to look at it, but he plays it in his living room and he's panning the camera around watching like things shake. And then all of a sudden you hear off camera as he's looking over there, his wife yells, why are there things shaking in the kitchen? <laughs> and then the video inexplicably cuts out. <laughs> Let me give a shout out to our good friend, uh, Mr. Uh, Zarbo. Zarbo is down in the chat. Oh, um, is he? Y'all, um, if y'all haven't checked out Zarbo's channel, I mean, this guy is yeah. great. He's great on camera and he makes things that I, I'm a, I'm a complete hack compared to this guy. He is an yes. artist. He makes some amazing subwoofer boxes. Um, I have not had my hands on the high excursions and yeah. I'm trying to figure out what parts express is doing with their product lineup. Cause why do they need in that reference series, why do they need yeah. a reference, a reference high output, a reference high excursion, and then they have an Ultimax and the and, and the MX series? I'm just scratching my head, going, "What are they trying to do? <laughs> I don't get it." Yeah, that's a good question. I, you know, I haven't used. So, a funny story is, the last time I was at uh, Parts Express uh, Midwest Audio Fest, which was years now, <laughs> years. Yeah, yeah, they, 2019, right? Yeah, they showed those off but they didn't come out for like years later. And I was like, Whoa. And so, but they were like talking it up. Like they were going to come out like that, but you know, I think everything hit with COVID and stuff and things just went awry, but I think you're, I think you're right. What is going on? And right now I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm kind of glad they have all these because it seems like every time you want to go buy a certain subwoofer, it's out of stock. At least you have options now. Mm -hmm. Someone was asking what sub was 30 bucks. That is the GRS. GRS stands for great replacement speaker. Um, it, it's like an old school sub from the nineties, right? Which is why it works so well in an isobaric setup. Um, <laughs> Chris Rock is not happy with you, DB. <laughs> I just now saw the second half of the co comment. Probably slaps harder than Will Smith. <laughs> I don't think Will Smith slaps that hard because Chris Rock was still like, you know, he wasn't phased. He just rolled right with it. I don't think he heard him. Hey Zarbo, you're getting some uh you're you're getting some interest in in some build money, it looks like. Zarbo, do you take side jobs building boxes for others? Look at that. We're just trying to get people together for uh, that's great. I, I would like to I would like my hands on the high excursion. I I can't remember right off the top of my head, but I think I modeled some. And part of the issue with the high excursion in general was I was either having issues with the um keeping port velocity down or having trouble with the first port resonance, like one or the other. Like when I got one under control, the other one was out of control. But don't quote me on that because I've modeled a lot of subwoofers and I get them confused sometimes. But something to pay attention to if you do model it. All right, let's let's talk about some more things that we have. Oh, well, I think we can both agree on this. Mm -hmm. uh, we both agree that the best form of impedance measurement is that's correct? Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. I, I <laughs> when I was sc scrounging to get ready for the show, I noticed I have my dats back here behind me. I keep it up here as a prop half the time. Uh, that's that's a great tool. Um, I, I I love having the dats around. There it is. Oh, well, that so very let nice. me tell you something you can do with the dats. That I think people Here's don't realize. Dats. Um, so this is my Tang Band speaker, and y'all can see. Do y'all see that? Nick, how well can you see that? I can as see I that twisted. Fine. Do, do you see yeah. that uh, big? wave in the uh in the basket yes yes so this was the one from the uh the blue the boom box build off and it came damaged and parts express helped me out and sent me another one and i've got for another project that i'm working on um two more of these and one thing you can do with that dats is you can test these side to side yeah and that so you test one of them that you know is good and that is your reference driver right so this is the one that's fresh out of the box we know it's working properly and you do it, it's called like a rum and hum and rattle test or something like that. And then you test the other one. And now when I get around to trying to bend this frame back in, because I think it's just aluminum and it's thin, it'll bend when I put it back in a, an enclosure. I can test it to know if, if that deformation has really damaged the um, the enclosure. And it's called a rub and buzz test. You can also test things like your resistors, buzz, yes. your inductors, your capacitors. I mean, there's so many different things that you can test with that thing. 
one of my favorite things to test is uh, tuning frequency, especially after I built a speaker. Recently, I built a speaker and it was tuning significantly lower than it was supposed to. Um, and so I had to continue to enlarge the port surface area and shorten it until I got it tuned to where I wanted to. Um, you know, and that's that's nice to have that to double check that because not always, sometimes it just doesn't work the way you want it to. The other thing is a measurement microphone. Now, which measurement microphone do you use, Justin? Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's one of the mini DSP ones. It's the Umic one, I think, right? I think so, yeah, yeah. And that is what I consider the best budget microphone out there. Um, I say budget because it uses Rue. I like Rue. Rue is free. There's nothing wrong with Rue. Rue can be convoluted, though. Um, you're, you'll I'm have to learn not, it. I'm still not sure what I'm doing when I fire up Rue. It, it's really, it's, it's. <laughs> I mean, luckily, there's a lot of people that use Rue, and so you can get help if you need it, but you might need it. Like setting the impulse is a little bit harder, knowing which track to use, what speed to do the test on, things like that can make it a little bit harder to know what you're doing in the beginning. You got any um, anyone on the forum who's posted some directions on how to use Rue? I might need to head over to the forum and read up on it a little bit. No, I don't. But that's why I use the Omni mic. But I tell people, hey, look, the Omni mic is a lot more expensive. So get the Omni mic if you're going to be doing this a lot. Like if this is something that you want to be doing, you want to really enjoy it, buy the Omni mic because it automatically picks the right tracks for you. You can set the impulse just by selecting a point on a graph. It does a lot of things easier. Um, and it just gives you your results right away. Uh, and and the, that's what I like about it. I, I the just, Omni I mic is software and microphone together. Yes. And yes. it's like 300 bucks. Right? Huh. It, it is. Um, I'm sorry. Someone posted something. It, it's no, the Omni mic is like th uh, 260. So it's not. Okay. It's not, ex it's not, ex it's a lot more expensive. Like, I think it's double the prices you make one. I think the you make one's about 130. This is about 260. So, you know, you're going to want to use it more than just once, probably. But if you are getting into this, you really like it, I say go on your mic. To me, that's the best software slash hardware measurement microphone system that I've ever used. And I, I would push it all day long because I really do like it. And, you know, like True Voice of Raisin, he says, hey, I got that's an IMM6, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just I have an I have an, I have an IMM six. It's uh it's fine. I'm not sure if mine's working because I washed it, it, left it in a pocket. <laughs> oh jeez. Well, here's the here's the thing. I, I have seen a lot of people use Dats and Rue. I'm sorry, Dats or Rue and something like you make one or something. And I gotta say, I have not. I have seen a lot of incorrect measurements with it, and nothing wrong with that. It's just you know you you want to make sure you got measurement data that's good. I uh, think my post was deleted to it. I, hey, man, I'm not sure why, but uh, send me whatever's going on because it shouldn't have been deleted at all. That should not have been deleted. I'm sorry. But yeah, no, I think that's cool. Is it a good idea to use a 3D printed speaker horn? First of all, yes, it is. And I have on my list what I consider the best 3D print. I've been using 3D printers for a while. My first one was, I don't know, one of the budget ones, the ANET A6. That's what it was, ANET A6. Terrible. Don't anyone buy it. It's junk, plastic, everything. It's awful. I, I got like one good print out of that thing the entire time I used it. Uh, one of my favorite ones after that was the Ender 5. Very good printer. I liked it. Still had quite a bit of issues with it, but it was better than, you know, much better than a A6 a and better than any of the other ones I used. I finally got asked by Fo Focus, I guess, F-O-K-O-O-S to do a review on theirs. And I got to say, I was a little concerned because it was all pretty much all built. You only had to put like four screws in and a couple other things. It was together in like five minutes. This thing, which I have right there, is the best 3D printer I have ever used. I, I, I like it much better than my Ender 5. The Ender 5 has height on it. It can print taller objects. But for me, that focus is awesome. And in fact, it's got so good that so many other people I've been hyping up, I guess, so much. So many other people started buying it on the forum. We ended up creating its own forum for the forum. So you can go there. If you buy it, you can go there and talk to us. We'll give you tips and hints of what how we use it. I just printed off two NVIDIA Shield stands that were going to cost me 30 bucks on Amazon. That cost me like, I don't know, 
50 cents in material to print out. It's, it's fantastic. So, but yes, I think printing horns, 3D printing speaker horns is one of the things that would be very useful for that. And tell me again, which 3D printer to stay away from and which one to get. Well, the A A6 is just junk. I don't even know if they still sell that one, but it was cheap when I got it. But that was when 3D printers were still relatively out of the price range of people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let me show you the one that I, I have that I love. Um, and I, like I said, I, I use this often. Uh, one of the guys on the forum actually just switched from a much more expensive one to this, uh, and he's liking it. But, uh, you know, some of it is ease of use. Now, this one actually has a 30% off coupon right now. So what is that? Uh, $35, 70 or oh, $105 off right now? Mm. So it's, what is that? So 255 somewhere in that range? $250. You know, I really ought to get into, into 3D printing. I know I could use it for, so, yeah, for yeah. making content and doing stuff, but I just, I don't really want to learn how to use one or a CNC machine for that matter. I guess I'm just old school. It's it's easy. You've got to watch my video on this. Look, I, I'm telling you, I did a video oh, on this. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, it is so easy to run this machine. And that's what makes me so happy about it. It just works. I, I saw the video. I, I clicked on the link. I put it in my cart and I thought, nah, I want to buy a DSP instead. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I was, I was this close. I was really that close to it. I, I like it. And see, that's the thing. And I think this is what Joe said. Hey, I thought those were still outrageously expensive and they're, they're not anymore. I mean, that, that thing is amazing. And one of the hardest things is getting a print, to stick right and that's leveling your bed and they made leveling bed very simple and it's a direct drive which means you just stick the filament right in and it auto loads it versus a bowden tube which is what like the ender 5 is or whatever where you have to actually like hold a button down and slide it through a tube and it's just a pain but i i i love it so yes i agree with that and i i think 3d printers in general for audio there's a lot of really great things. You can make your own binding post, you know, plate on the back. I mean, there's so many things that you could do with them. Or 3D print. I have an Aurelic unit. I don't have it here. 3D print an enclosure for my Aurelic unit. Right, right. Yeah. All right. So the best 3D printer was the, what's it called again? Something Odin? Focus Odin five f3 oh you pronounce it focus i was pronouncing that word differently <laughs> i think a lot of people were <laughs> <laughs> there's no u in it <laughs> okay okay that makes sense now um all right i got a favorite that i want to share with you i'm going to show share the screen here and let me show you one of the things that i i really like all right oh yes let's see this okay so this is um this is the thing that kind of got me started into speaker building. Uh, the first thing I really built for, for the home was a subwoofer enclosure. And then I said, you know what? I want to try to make my own like home theater speakers. And I ordered the Tritrix kit. I ordered just the parts only. And the first thing that I built was one just like this for a center channel build. build. And this right here is, in my opinion, the best kit for someone who wants to get started in, in building home theater speakers, home audio speakers for a couple of reasons. One, the crossover isn't too complicated. It's five parts. Uh, yeah. In fact, when I built mine, I built a center channel. So it looked just like this. I did the, I did the woodworking myself because I wanted to learn how to do that. I wanted to actually get into woodworking as well as this. And when I did the crossover, I just glued the crossover components to the inside of the enclosure. I didn't put them on a board or a plate or anything, which is just fine from what I gather. And yeah. I was able to have all this room to work in so I could glue it and solder it and have, I actually drew the schematic on the inside of the enclosure <laughs> and just put the parts where they, where they belonged in the, in the schematic. And so it was pretty easy to do. I get a little bit, um, it's a little bit intimidating wiring up a crossover. I've done it several times now. And what, what happens is you have the parts and the instant you start sticking them to the board and soldering them together there, you know, you cut off the ends and it's too short to repurpose and they're soldered together. So you're kind of, you're <laughs> into it. Right. So once you start assembling the crossover, it's kind of like, well, there's no return. And that's it was so make, easy. That's why they make uh, insulated wire, huh? 
I guess so. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so if you're going to get into, into speaker building, uh, they make several different kits. If you don't have woodworking tools that you can get the knockdown cabinets. And so the, the knockdown cabinets are great if you don't have an easy way to cut or you're not confident in your ability to cut straight lines. Um, but if you have a table saw or um, uh, I actually did mine with a circular saw with a Craig jig, I should have put that on my list because uh, <laughs> that's, that's the best. Idea, yeah, I should have put the Craig jig on the list. I love that thing. If you don't have a table saw, it, it's this $30 or $40 part that you can use to cut straight lines. Um, and so if you want to get started, get one of these Tritrix kits and they have several different versions. Uh, you can get them with or without the knockdown box. They have the tall uh, transmission lines and they sound great. And you know, are there better sounding stuff out there? Sure. But this is the best way to get started. I'm going to just mention Steven here. He said, Hey, that speaker alignment gives me OCD because the tweeter is not directly in line with the woofers. And so I'm just going to really quickly talk about this. The reason why it's done. And by the way, if you guys want to start a topic on the forum about this, I think it'd be a really good topic to talk about. But the reason why this is done like this is uh, to cut down on diffraction. So the tweeter if it's directly in the center it's going to diffract both at the left and right side at the same frequency and so it's going to make your diffraction worse by offsetting it now you're diffracting at two different frequencies making your diffraction better so everyone would start to think well why don't we just always design our speakers like that and that's because when you go off axis of this you're going to be off axis uneven right so you're going to be like when you go further to the right, you'll still be more on axis to the tweeter. When you go over to the left, you're going to be further off axis from, you know, this particular speaker I'm looking at. And so it all depends on your design goals. Some people will do this, but typically this is designed either for uh, a one seat alignment or it's designed for near field use, like in a, you know, like at a desktop or something. There's nothing wrong with this, by the way. But you do want to make sure that see how the tweeters are opposite sides where mm -hmm, they're recessed. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure to do that because otherwise. <laughs> yeah. And there's. Yeah. 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 The one goes on the right. One goes on the left. Right. Or turn them upside down. And, and you know, you, you've got to have them set up with their offset like that. E exactly. So anyway, the whole point beyond that. All right. So what else do you have on your list, man? I've got plenty of stuff on my list. Uh, in so, fact, so, I think, I let me um, let me grab a prop. Actually, actually, here's one that's not right. on my list. Actually, while while you're grabbing that, let's let's. <clears throat> I want to talk about this because I know we both have something to talk about uh, on this. I believe. Okay. The best place to get a, a car audio stereo, like your car like head, head unit. unit. I, I think it's Crutchfield. Crutchfield, yeah. Because wow. they've, they've been doing it for years and they've and got the else? database of cars and parts and it's expensive, but you just like click the little box to get all the stuff you need to hook it up. And and that's what, that's yes. what matters. It's the stuff you need to hook it up. That's the hard part of a car stereo. So I have a 2008 Lincoln MKX. So it's an older car, but it has a THX built in system. It has steering wheel controls, has all these things that like, if you were to go hook this up by yourself, it's, it's a nightmare. When you go to Crutchfield, they're going to say, okay, hey, look, this is the head unit you need. Here's the wiring harness. Here's the adapters you need for the steering wheel control. Here's this. And they'll give you like a good, better, best. Like this will give you all your options. This will give you some of them. This will give you nothing but the car stereo working. You know? and, and some of those options will have stuff you don't need in case you want to like, there's more than one way to run into a USB plug or something like that. And that's fine because there's nothing worse than having the dash out of a car and it's Sunday afternoon at four o'clock and the car needs to be on the road at eight o'clock in the morning so that someone can get to work and you don't have the parts that you need. Exactly. And they, and it comes with its own printout of how to wire this for your specific vehicle, how to get the dash off, how to get the doors off all of it. It, it is by far the best place to do that. Especially if you have a newer model car. I mean, by newer model, I mean anything built after 1988. I mean, they, I mean, and they, and, and they've been uh, Crutchfield. 
like started doing this in the seventies, right? There's, I mean, so they've had these and they've been doing these master sheets since I was in high school. So like, you know, how do you get that dash apart? Heck if I know, I don't know where all the screws and stuff are. This isn't five star <laughs> car stereo where I take 10 cars apart every day and put them all back together. If you don't have the directions and another thing that's cool about Crutchfield, right? Is the support. I'm just going to go on a tangent yeah. here. Okay. No, um, when I put the radio in my wife's car, I needed to tap into the uh, light the tail light for the reverse light, right? So I could get the backup camera to pow power on. I've never done a backup camera before. Running a backup camera was a pain in the rear. You, you might, I take, take the entire car had to come apart basically. I had the thing gutted so I could get all the wires back, uh, you know, back seat out, all that stuff. Should have put an amplifier in while I was in there because <laughs> the thing was just every, every part was apart. The console was out of it and all this stuff is out. And I'm looking at this wire harness plugging into the light bulb going, I have no idea which one of these damn wires is positive. I and I picked up the phone and I called Crutchfield and the, they were busy, but they had the option to have someone call you back. And oh. they have the access to that database that tells you where all the wires are. Ten, ten minutes later, the guy calls me back and is like, oh, yeah, it's this color. And I should have written it down and saved it because <laughs> I remember which color it was. But they, they know that stuff. They have the database and they have the customer support. And I don't know if others do or not, but I know they do. No, they're they're the best that I found. Someone else might know them. And of course, we're talking about U.S. There might be someone you know outside the U.S. that does that. Now, I'm going to just mention this to you guys. If you guys find this information useful at all the links down below uh, they are affiliate links uh, uh, well most of them i can't say all of them because some Not of all them, of them most of them yeah a, a lot of them are affiliate links you know feel free to use our affiliate links we are viewer supported i mean that's how we can make these shows for you we can't do these without your guys's support so we appreciate that i feel like we're in pr now <laughs> <laughs> This national, show is made possible by viewers like you. National professional audio. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, geez. All right. Now go, go with yours. Sorry. I, I just wanted to bring that I, up because I knew I've got tons of them. I, I just keep, I just keep, I just keep turning around and seeing stuff laying on this table behind me going, Oh wait, I should talk about that one. Um, I want to talk about amplifiers for the car and, this is tricky because what is the best amplifier for the car? Well, I mean, however much money you can afford is the best amplifier for the car, right? That's and, a good point. And so it's it's hard to name a best one, but this wasn't what's the best one. What's the best one that we use? It's something we've had hands-on experience with because that's one thing that we do is we're not one of these hack websites that just grab specs from some other website, Right. Yeah. We actually show you how things work. And so I've recently started testing amplifiers and I tested this one right here. It's a recoil RED 600.1. Oh, that, yeah, that was a good, uh, that was a good video too. If anyone hasn't and, seen that, they should watch it. And it did really well. And the thing about this brand, I did a lot of Googling to try to figure out what it was. Um, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a Chinese brand. Uh, if you were to Google recoil audio, China, <laughs> <laughs> just Google that. You will actually land on the the seller in China that's selling them with the recoil badge on them, where you can order five hundred of these for sixty five dollars. Um, and if you wanted to order five hundred of them and resell them, you could. I don't know why the hell you'd want to. That sounds like you know a, a lot of money. Um, and I don't know how durable the amp is. I don't know what the customer support is like on the amp, but I know that on uh, on a one ohm load going up to clipping the fuses popped before uh before i hit clipping and the fuses popped at about 750 watts and this was a 99 dollar amplifier that wow. that put out 750 watts at clipping and it I, I wouldn't recommend it because i mean fuses are there for a reason but if you were to put in a pair of uh did they make 35 amp fuses i don't know 35 amp 40 amp fuses you could probably squeeze more power out of it. You'll never get that power dynamically on, a, on an active speaker, of course. That doesn't but it sound did. very safe. <laughs> no, no, no. That don't don't do that. That's a great way to start a fire. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, it's a you know Chinese brand that just came over on a boat from China. I don't know anything else about it besides what I what I found googling it. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that with the fuses. That'd probably be a bad idea. But it made the power. And it's even a hundred dollar amp that did 700 Watts, uh, at, um, at, at 1% THD. I mean, so, now that's great. It, 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 it performed long-term would it hold up. I don't know. Uh, it's a hundred dollars. <laughs> and yeah, here's the deal. Speaking of like low budget car audio stuff, right? 
I'm going to talk about two car audio head units that I've liked because we both know that there's cheap car audio. You threw one in the trash. Oh, God, <laughs> that isn't good. Terrible. Here's the deal. I, I had so, they, well, we I so wonder mad. why you threw it in the <laughs> trash. Of course, they're upset with you. Oh, geez. I Here's, fished it out. It's sitting on a shelf. If anybody wants to throw it in their trash can, I'd be glad to send it to you. have like them. a banana peel on it and so <laughs> that. So, so here, here's the deal, though. It is hard to find them that work, right? Like budget one, that just work. And I mean, that's like, because a lot of times that's what you want. We were talking before the show. I have really grown a love for wireless Android Auto. We both have Android units. The car stereos that do wireless Android auto that are name brand are expensive. 500 plus dollars. And that's for a Jensen or a boss. A thousand plus dollars for like a pioneer or Sony that does it. And we believe wireless is better because your phone charger changes every time you get a new phone for fast charging. And if you have to plug it up via USB, what happens is eventually it's not going to keep up with charging your phone. And you just you said you've experienced that, right? Yeah. So my wife has a uh, uh, the radio in her car is the Alpine ILX uh, W650, and you think, hey, it's Alpine, it's supposed to be good quality stuff. It's finicky as all hell. If the charging cable is not a high quality charging cable, oh hey, is that a super chat? Yeah, I think so. Unless I just missed it, I have no idea. But we'll okay. pretend like it is. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, we'll take him. Um, but that thing is just so finicky. My wife actually has to unplug the phone in order to take a phone call and switch over to Bluetooth. Um, and it's just like, oh, come on, Alpine. And what it boils down to is I did some reading in the manual and other other ones have the same problem. There's just not enough juice to charge a modern phone and operate Android Auto at the same time. And and that's become problematic. And so, you know, people were saying, hey, you know, there's a cheap Sony for $250 you can get. But the problem is it's wired. And my phone to use uh, is a USB C, and it needs to be USB C on both ends. And yeah, that Sony two hundred and fifty dollar head unit doesn't do that. Right. So my concern would be, hey, long trips, etc., or if my phone's already dying, I've been using it at a ball game, recording video or audio, and I need to get home. Those are like the situations where I get concerned about that. A Total F7, the new XE, which is the Extreme Edition. I, I tested their F7 and loved it. I have not tested their Extreme Edition, but the only difference, my understanding, is that they added wireless audio, uh, Android Auto to it. Um, and recently, I did the Osman A8. The Osman A8 doesn't do anything spectacular, but it works, and it's $200. <laughs> and it comes with a rear backup camera. It comes with a microphone. It's not the best. And it comes with physical buttons. So it's one of those things. It's like, okay, look. Now, you're not going to get the best audio. You're not going to get the best video quality, but you're going to get one that works wirelessly. You're going to be able to charge your phone. It's going to last for a long time. It's $200. You know, so for me, like the best cheap, like wireless Android head auto head units are the Atoto F7, which is about $50 or $60 more. It does have a better screen, has better audio quality. And then the Osman A8, which is, it works. I mean, like, I don't know. I can't say anything. It works. It's a little slower. It's not it's not as good as the F7, but it's still it works. I don't know, Justin. You have anything to say to that? You know, I would love to get my hands on a an off-brand stereo like that that works. I, I was really disappointed that the one that I got my hands on was such such a low quality one. So it's one reason why I made the drama of throwing in the trash can at the end of the video because you know, I put a lot of work into that video and it's like, why did you send me garbage? Yeah. Now, what did you think I was going to do if you send me a garbage review? Because I can't tell my viewers that garbage is good because yeah. then I'll lose credibility. And if I, if I say something is good, I need to actually believe it's good. And I could be wrong. I could say it's good and it's actually garbage and that's being human. But um, I can't take something that's just doesn't, the UI didn't work. The layout didn't make any sense. Um, and so it's, I'm glad you found one that works. That's That's cool. Yeah, and that's kind of where I, I'm getting back at it too. Like there's so many ones that just don't work that it's kind of like, look, I mean, to find one at $200 that actually works is, it's like finding the unicorn, right? You're like, oh, hey, look, it works. Yeah, there's things that are, it's not great. It's not perfect, but at $200, it shouldn't be. And if it is, it's like, whoa, then it really is a crazy unicorn. But I, the F7 was faster. Um, 
I actually regret getting rid of the F7. I gave it to one of my page. Well, it was in a garage sale. One of my patrons. I, I kind of regret getting rid of that. I might end up buying a new XE for myself. <laughs> That's a little rhyme there. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right. What do you got, Justin? I've got tons of stuff. This is why I didn't put a link in. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the, the, the custom speaker pods.com people, um, custom speaker pods.com. From what I gather, the discount code, uh, Hey, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a super chat from abstract acoustics. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um, apparently the coupon code is still working, so you can still get a discount if you go to their website and type in DIY AG as a coupon code. So that's nice. I'm glad to I'm glad to find that it was still working. So if you need door pods, I mean they're they get the job done. Yeah, and that saves you a lot of time. That's what exactly it's a time saver. It's a time yeah. saver. It's um, kind of like know, those are really you know, so we're talking about that go in the ceiling. It's yeah. a time saver. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I doubt you could build one cheaper than what these are. So yeah, I, I completely, I completely agree. Yep. 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 All right. You got what else one? you got? I talked a lot about the, the $200 I'll, I'll head. Keep, you. I'll keep showing stuff off if you'll keep asking me, cause I can yeah. just keep going. No, um, keep this showing, is keep right now, in my opinion, this is my favorite amp. Uh, this is the JP eight. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> I haven't had a chance to dyno it, but do I need to? Because it's been dynoed several times. I like the look. The look is is the part that for me is the best part because I love that you know kind of old school classic look. I think you should. And I'll tell you why. I think most of the people that have dynoed that got it for free from JP from that. That is true. Person. I did pay for mine. I, I am not it. yeah, I am not supported in any way by uh by by Jonathan Price or his crowd. Uh but my biggest concern with testing Thank it you, is I don't think I have. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I don't know if I have enough. Of, I don't think my power supply is beefy enough to, to fully support this amplifier. So um, here's the deal. Well, it may be, but I would also like to see like from someone that's not like. All right. I, I always get concerned. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one. Like you get something for free from someone, right? And you wonder like, did I get like a stock that they sent and tested beforehand? And then like they buy one off the shelf and maybe it's not quite as good as the one that you're, I don't know. I, maybe. So, someone actually said that Eminence did that to me because they tested so very well together. Like so close to this. Well, they probably... I, I I know the person who sent them to me, and I do not believe that to be the case. They never said that was I could have been, I guess. I mean, but I don't think it is. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? That there'll, there'll always be the conspiracy theory. Yeah. Um, I was always, you know, I, it doesn't matter. All right, we're gonna talk about something else. You All know right. What? I'm, I'm gonna talk about. Someone asked about favorite tweeters, um, and they asked about the SB acoustics. I don't know about the SB acoustics. Well, I mean, the SB acoustics is good. I mean, let's let's just be honest. Of course, it's good. Um, SB, almost most SB acoustics, SB audience are good. The SB audience recently, the uh, compression driver I use is fantastic. SB audience, by the way, is the professional version of SB acoustics. They're very good. I have three compression drivers I highly recommend. The DE250-8 hits way above its price range, in my opinion. The SB Acoustics does as well. They're one inch. And the D220Ti is like my favorite budget one. The other ones are better, but the D220Ti is like, hey, I, I'm I'm on a budget. Which one should I buy? That's the one. All right, but let's do this one. Have you used this, the Ring Radiator by uh, Peerless? I, I had one in my shopping cart and almost pulled the trigger on that one. And, and I don't know why I didn't. Um, I think it's because... I, I wasn't set up to measure at the time and, and they don't have the same measurement that the Dayton audio ones do. So I, so I switched something out for a Dayton audio uh, tweeter, but those ring radiators, they look kind of cool. They are. And they have the 30 and the 60, the 60 is out of stock right now. The 60 basically just has more, um, more power handling, but this is like one of the flattest, one inch tweeters that I've ever, ever measured. They're, they're unbelievably flat. I think they actually have 
And by the way, yeah, you know, sometimes you like wonder like, hey, is this measurement really that good? And the answer is yes, it is. Peerless always throws people off though because they look at these off axis and they're like, oh, the off axis is terrible. You got to look at the off axis because this off axis is on axis, which goes all the way to 40K. But then it goes drops all the way down to 30 degrees and then 60 degrees where most people are, are like on axis 15 and 30. And so this blue one's the worst you'll ever see on someone else's graph. If that We've makes sense. We've got another super chat. Oh, we did. Oh, John. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. I have a. Oh, hey, look at that. He's got something to, for you to dino. You know, I'm I'm not sure where I stand on the whole dinoing amps that people send me, like 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 a, a, average people, you know, viewers. Um, because if something goes wrong, um, <laughs> uh, and the amp gets fried, I I don't want to be responsible for damaging someone else's equipment. And so I know that um, like like uh, Derek, for example, doesn't do that very often. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of follow his lead. He's been down that path before, and and I, I would hate to destroy someone else's gear. Uh, so if it's my gear and I destroy it, well, I only hurt myself, but if it's someone else's gear, then well, that's not fun. Yeah. And this, the I, SB, so I haven't used this SB acoustics one, but I will tell you this, it, it is supposed to be very, very well. It's highly regarded. I just haven't personally used it. So I can't, I can't, I can't, we've, we mentioned at the beginning of the show, if we haven't used it, we're not going to say it's great, but SB acoustics in general offers very high quality stuff. So. My, my door speakers in my truck are SB acoustics and I've been very happy with them. Yeah, they, they make great. And my SB, the SB audience, the 12 inch woofer that I just used is one of the, if not the best 12 inch speaker I have ever measured like distortion. Otherwise it's just very, 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 very good. So um, I'm also going to mention this one. If this one is also a, a decent one for um, a tweeter. And here's the deal. There's, there's some good five eighths inch and three quarter inch. I didn't really do those. I just mainly met, was worried about like the one and one in a and an eighth and things that I think people are using on bigger projects. But that would be this one right here, which is the Dayton Reference series fabric dome tweeter. Ooh. Uh, I've used this ah. in a couple. Very good. Very very good speaker tweeter if you want to use it. And the thing about both of these is you can cross them over fairly low. Like this resonant frequency on this is 710 hertz and the peerless is 436 hertz, which you're not going to be, you're not going to cross over at 800 hertz. But the basic thing is you can take a, the FS, multiply it by two, and that should be a decent area of where you could cross over with a second order. You know, best to take, obviously, uh, measurements to make sure but oh hi-fi you missed it man we were talking you up and justin was like i can't talk about him anymore because he totally broke my heart when he left the show <laughs> not at not at all not at all i if i find you made my list of favorite uh big three kits so we, we that we we led with that so uh you definitely missed your shout out you did and then then he said, but I don't like him as a person, but I love his kits. That's not uh, now you're, you're going to get me in trouble. Uh, well, he can he can watch the beginning if he wants. <laughs> That's not true at all. All right. So, look, I want to end on you. We're going to be ending right after whatever your last one is that you want to share, whatever you want to share. Sure, sure. Um, so I've got a, a favorite, um, a favorite uh sound deadener and wire both Ooh. and that is uh, new concepts i've used their 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 cld tiles uh the the stuff with the butyl rubber and there's a website that used to exist called sound deadener showdown hmm. and the guy who ran it you know got out of the business and he was selling sound deadener but he got started by testing out different sound deadener just to see how they work and ended up creating a website and selling the stuff and it was just chock full of information on the proper way to deaden a car uh, and so I, I went with the new concepts when I use my sound deadener, I liked it a whole lot. You can get this really heavy stuff that's out now. Uh, that's, you know, great overkill, great for, um, you know, your big SPL systems for just like a sound quality system, though, the stuff new concept sells is, is fantastic. And I'm a big fan of their wire too. I like their wire kits. Uh, they've got different styles of, uh, of 
fuse blocks. Uh, I like most of their fuse boxes. They, they've got one that's not very nice in my opinion, but most of their fuse boxes are great. So that's, I got, I'll tell you know, my, so in the affiliate links, those are the best sound deadener uh, that I've used. It's the new concepts. And that's K-N-U, by the K-N-U, way. K-N-U, yeah. I feel like I'm K-N-U stumbling across concepts. my words. Canoe, kind of like Knight. Right. Yeah. If you don't know that, then you, English is probably not your first language. <laughs> Well, all right. It is uh, five minutes after, um, and you said you wanted to wrap it up. No. Well, you know what? I'm going to mention this first. We did not go through all of our list. We just didn't. We didn't have time. No. We, no. We'd and, be on for hours. And we knew we weren't going to go over our whole list. But you can just go ahead and check the description below. Click on the links. There's a bunch there. There's all kinds of things that we didn't go over that I think you would be interested in. Now, if there's something at least from my list that you want to go over more in depth. Put it out on the forum. Go to toidsdiyaudio.com slash forums. Write it out on the forum that it's dedicated to. And I'd be happy to help you out as long with as well as the other guys. So, you know, just go ahead and head over there and do that. Now, Justin, why don't you tell us what you have going on this week? And then I'll get us out. I'm not certain I can spill the beans as to what I have going on this week. Uh, I think I've got to hold off on, on the big announcement of what I'm working on, which is just code for, I've got like 10 different projects going at the exact same time and can't get any of them finished because I had too many started at once. Uh, so I, I maybe it'll be an amp dyno uh, next weekend. Maybe it'll be a speaker build. It'll depend on what I get finished and what I get edited. And my hope is that I'll have a good weekend for editing and be able to have like several things out there ready to go and get out ahead of things a little bit. But I, I'm not certain yet what i'll be posting uh this coming weekend or even if i will be so mine is going to be on this you're going to see this and i'm going to hopefully you know if i can really work hard i'm going to try to get two out but i got a lot of things i got to do outside of this but what i'm definitely going to be working on that that one is one you will definitely see and you're going to want to see that because that dsp board is so powerful there's so many things you can do with it and honestly it's a lot easier to use than you think. So make sure you catch that. Uh, share that with other people too, because I think people will be very interested in this amplifier because it can do a lot for you. It could really change the way that you design crossovers from here on out. Meaning you don't have to. <laughs> well, digitally, but not you, you don't have to have a big wall of capacitors, resistors, and inductors like I do. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it, it, it does make a big difference. I've got a review on a head unit very similar to the one Nick just did a video out coming out this weekend. So is it by Osman Hi-Fi? I'll be interested. I, I'll be interested to see that because he's, you know what? He's jealous of mine because I I saw his and his, he said it did not have physical buttons and mine did. So sorry, man. Got to throw it in the trash button. then. What? <laughs> I know. Well, it's, you know, it's instinct to just go over there, turn down the volume. So I, I like that. All right, guys. This is Justin Toyd. I'll see you later. We're out.